Breaking news this morning, a Pfizer study finds that their COVID-19 vaccine is safe and effective for children aged 5 to 11. So for more on this, let's bring in the dean of Brown University School of Public Health, Dr. Ashish Jha. Good morning to you, Dr. Jha. Good morning, Rachel. Welcome back. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, Dr. Jha, a lot of people tuning in this morning across the country are now going to be asking themselves, should they in fact vaccinate their children? Do you think parents should feel safe doing that? Yeah, so I do. And I'll tell you, I have a nine year old and I'm going to vaccinate him as soon as it's authorized by the FDA. Now, I want to see more of the data right now. It's just a press release. Uh, but what we know is that kids, while they're less likely to get sick than adults, uh, still get sick. We saw about 2000 kids getting hospitalized every week in this country from COVID. And so I plan to do it as long as the full data that we see really pans out the way the press release suggests it will. The data I've seen this morning says that 460, at least 460 children have died from COVID-19 since the pandemic began. So let me ask you, Dr. Zhao, what kind of immunity do you expect from this vaccine? We see colleges back in school with jam-packed football stadiums. They don't have to have their masks on, assuming they're vaccinated. Do you think that the children in school will be able to take their mask off if, in fact, they do get vaccinated? Yeah, that's a really good question. Once kids are vaccinated, and I, first of all, I don't think all the kids are going to get vaccinated. I think a lot of uh, this is going to take a while for, for this to roll out. Um, as long as infection numbers get low, and I, they will. I Look, I really expect we're seeing infection numbers drop in many places. I think we will get to a point where absolutely kids are going to be unmasked. We do not want kids masked up forever in schools. And I think the question is when. I think it'll happen sooner rather than later if, uh, if a large number of kids end up getting vaccinated. And Dr. Jha, do you know if there's any other countries right now that is vaccinating children under the age of 12. Yeah, there are a couple. Um, the UK is thinking about it. I'm, I'm actually just trying to remember who the countries are. I think there are two other countries that are doing it. I don't want to guess off the top of my head and get it wrong, but the, it is happening. And I think what you'll see with this data is more countries joining in in the, in the next few uh, days and weeks. Okay, so let's switch now to booster shots. Of course, a big talker this morning as well. The FDA has rejected the Biden administration's plan for that third shot for most Americans. But Dr. Anthony Fauci is insisting that it's not the end of the story. We're now learning that people 65 and older will be urged to get that booster shot. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I thought the FDA panel largely got it right. Um, they, what they said was that, look, the high priority should be high-risk people, uh, people over 65. Now, the data from Israel is people over 60, so we can debate 60 versus 65. But other high-risk people, people with diabetes and high blood pressure and heart disease. But they also said, by the way, uh, healthcare workers and other frontline workers who are exposed at higher levels uh, would benefit. I think that's all correct, and that's where we should begin. You know, what to do with the 20-year-old who's healthy, whether they need a third shot or not? I think I want to wait for more data. I suspect we'll have it in the next couple of months, and we can make a decision down the road based on what the data shows. To elaborate a little bit more on that, Dr. Zhao, we heard the Biden administration say that they will be urging everyone who's received the first two doses to, in fact, get that third booster dose. But as you mentioned, we have a different category of humans such as the 20 year old who is healthy and we still have plenty of people who haven't received the first two doses. So why do you think it was that President Biden pushed so hard on everyone getting access to those booster shots? Yeah. Well, first and foremost, I think and we all agree that what everybody needs to be doing is getting that first shot. So if you haven't gotten the first shot, you got to get your first shot. Uh, you do not want to end up in the hospital. You don't want to don't end up in a ventilator. And that's what we're seeing too often for people who are unvaccinated. You know what the Biden administration was doing, and I think this is Dr. Fauci and Dr. Walensky and others is looking at data from Israel. Israel is to giving third doses to everybody over, mm. I think, 16, but certainly to, to the average healthy 20 year old is getting that booster shot in Israel. They were looking at the data from Israel that suggests uh, that people do benefit. Uh, I think that benefit is small right now. And so I think the FDA panel got this right. My sense is the Biden administration was going based on the primarily the Israeli data uh, and Israeli practice, which is to give boosters to everybody. OK, now many people who received, let's say, the Moderna or Johnson & Johnson vaccine seem to be feeling a bit left out. We know data is expected to come in about a few weeks to determine if there will be a third dose of Moderna or a second dose of J&J. &J. Will someone who has received one of these vaccines be able to get a third booster of Pfizer? Or are we not mixing them like that? Yeah, you know, the mixing question is a really good scientific question. I think many of us have been interested in whether you actually benefit from mixing. Mm -hmm. We have that trial going on as well. I mean, obviously, in this pandemic, we're learning new things all the time. We're learning uh, whether the mixing is going to benefit or not. I think we'll have that information in a few weeks. I think I got Moderna. I expect we'll have data on Moderna in a few weeks. Uh, Johnson & Johnson probably still a couple of months away, and I'm frustrated because 14 million Americans have gotten the J&J &J shot. We have not given them any advice. I'd like to see the FDA and CDC come out and give them some advice about what to do. Uh, all of it coming soon. We just want to be driven by the data on all of this stuff. 
Right, of course, driven by the data because so many people got that Johnson & Johnson shot, one and done. They thought it was easier, and now they're going to kind of be lagging behind with that booster. Dr. Ja, as always, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Rachel. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.